All right, we're back for another episode. I am absolutely loaded up with pre-workout right now and trying to crank out as many of these as possible so I can upload while I'm on vacation. Uh, today's episode is going to be about unreliable clocks in distributed systems. Like my dick, it is going to be short, but still useful and effective. Nonetheless, let's get into it. Okie dokie, unreliable clocks. So in theory, imagine you have a database which has a bunch of leaders, right? So we can make a, a write to each of them. And you know, we want to decide how to resolve conflicts. And in order to resolve these conflicts, we want to know which write came first between the two. Well, I guess we could do something like um, vector clocks, which we've discussed in the past, or rather version vectors. But the issue there is that version vectors will just say that a lot of vectors are concurrent and you have to keep them as siblings. But what if we just want to keep one value? Well, we would need some way to order our writes. So why don't we just use timestamps? Like, it doesn't require any extra synchronization between the machines. Everyone has a clock on their computer. And as far as we can tell, they're all pretty accurate, right? So it should be pretty easy to do this and get rid of concurrency bugs in general. It seems like we have a great solution. Well, actually, it's not so simple. We can't rely on clocks. I'll explain why right now. OK, let's talk about how clocks actually work on most computers. Unless you are really trying to keep synchronized with um, you know, the current time and you have like a GPS receiver plugged into your computer, the majority of computers will occasionally synchronize with servers running NTP, aka the network time protocol. Um, once this happens, computers will use something called an internal quartz clock to measure the elapsed time and keep the time updated until the next synchronization with NTP. Well, that's pretty simple, right? However, there are some issues to this. One, even when I make a call to NTP, NTP is going to give me the current time from that server. However, then that time has to come back to me over the network, and the network can take an arbitrary amount of time. So now I have an outdated NTP result. Additionally, we have something called quartz clock drift, which is pretty bad. It means that the quartz clock running in our computers actually is able to oscillate a little bit more or less frequently sometimes. In fact, I believe using Google's measurement, they average that um, one day without synchronizing with NTP leads to seven seconds of clock skew, which is actually pretty significant. You know, like if I make a write and then someone else five seconds later makes their write, if my clock is off by seven seconds, the server might think their right was actually earlier than that. And then furthermore, you know, if we're using client timestamps, we can't set the clock of a device we don't own. A lot of people, if you've ever just like been on an iPhone, have gotten around like certain gaming time requirements by literally changing the time on their phone, and then boom, bug fix. <laughs> so, okay. How would we measure elapsed time then? Well, we definitely shouldn't use the time of day clock on our computer. Why? Because if we synchronize with NTP and our current clock is kind of far off from it, we might literally jump around and then it's going to completely throw off the elapsed time. Additionally, there's these stupid things called leap seconds where minutes either have 59 or 61 seconds. I don't really know about it. No one really knows about it except for time experts. But the point is that it ignores them. So when this happens, it also makes it bad for elapsed time. As a result, instead, we should really just be using a monotonic clock. A monotonic clock is basically just a counter on a computer that um, goes up a second at a time, and that way you can easily see how many elapsed seconds there were um, between two events happening. Additionally, ordering events. Like I said, this was kind of the main motivation behind using timestamps and distributed computing, was that we want to say what happened first and use the timestamps to do so. However, as I've discussed, these clocks are unreliable, so we shouldn't be doing this. Um, it can result in just dropping data if you're using last write wins and you have one write. Like I said, that happens on you know my server and then another write on the server in China, but their clocks are out of sync. My write might have happened before, but it seems like the write in China happened first, so boom, my data is just gone and I never even know why. So data dropped. Um, so instead, what we should do is use logical timestamps. So that's something like either um, version vectors, or if you really want a complete ordering of things in order to, uh, to decide conflicts, something like Lamport timestamps, which I'll discuss in a subsequent video. OK, summary. I told you this one was quick. Um, in distributed systems, clocks really are not reliable. Um, they can really only just generate a confidence interval that it is currently between some minimum time and some maximum time. 
And even though that confidence interval is solid, if we're synchronizing with NTP really frequently, uh, at the end of the day, there is a possibility of introducing a lot of time-based bugs there, and it's really not an ideal solution. Um, there are still a lot of companies that rely on using timestamps for their databases, and people do that all the time. One of the most popular um, NoSQL key value stores is Cassandra, which goes and resolves um, conflicts by using timestamp. And they basically acknowledge you should try and keep your servers as synchronized with NTP as possible. Another option that people use is Google Spanner, where Google Spanner really heavily relies on timing. However, the one thing that they do is use specialized hardware where all of their servers have a GPS clock attached to them so they can stay as confident about their time interval as possible, and as a result, they're able to take consistent snapshots using time intervals. But even still, at the end of the day, is this the best possible solution? Probably not. It's pretty complex and it introduces a lot of um, you know, issues to the problem. So at the end of the day, um, we would rather be using a different ordering mechanism and I'll start discussing those in subsequent